hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of the Digging Deeper podcast. And if you haven't been here before, our goal is to dig a little bit deeper into that week's sermon, so that way we might just dig a little bit deeper into our hearts. My name is Chris Brown, and I'm the associate pastor here. My name is Jacob Belding. I do connections, among other things. And I'm Michael Masterful, and I'm the student pastor. got to pull the mic closer. They can't hear you. I'm Michael Masterful, and I'm the student pastor. There we go. That that's that's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got Michael with us today, begrudgingly, but he's here, and uh, he's got a ton to add to today. Yeah? <laughs> Lots of thoughts. No, I agreed to do this if you didn't talk to me. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, you let us know in the comments, are you glad that Michael's here? I'm glad that Michael's here. Tell the truth. You're preaching Sunday, Michael. I'm preaching Sunday. Yeah. So I figured, what better way to spend my week <laughs> than here in the podcast with you yeah. guys? Okay, well, um, we are glad that y'all joined us here uh, this week. Uh, Judah is still ditching us for work. MIA. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, but we've got a uh, a good topic for you this week. Finding the goodness of God is the the sermon that Pastor Lee preached. And can you guess what's about? Um, the goodness of God. <laughs> That's a pretty fair guess right there. Yes, uh, finding the goodness of God, um, the whole kind of point of the passage is uh, really examining uh, the goodness of God. What is the goodness of God? How does it uh, relate to us? So on and so forth. Um, he kind of launches the sermon out of the rich young ruler passage. Uh, where the guy comes up and says, good teacher, what must I do to get to heaven? And what does Jesus say? Why do you call me good? Only God is good. Which poses the thought, what does that mean? It's a good question. So that's the whole sermon, and uh, the points break down like this. Um, Only God is good. It's a good place to start. Uh, You can experience uh, God's goodness, or actually I think he said, what what do you say specifically, God? Uh, God's goodness is something we can experience. God's goodness is something we can experience. And then point three is God created us all to be good. Now here's a preliminary question I'll let you think about it. Michael, you can think about it too. Um, If only God is good, then how are we created to be good? Hmm. Okay. (laughs) There's an answer to that question. Um, it's not that complicated. Either. It's not that complicated. Um, anyways. It can be. It depends how how deep into the rabbit hole you want to go. Yes. But, yeah. um, okay. Let's start with the passage. Um, this is Luke 18, uh, verse 18 through 23. Um, Jacob, take it away. All right. And a ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And he said, All these I have kept from my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, One thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad for he was extremely rich. He's like dabbing his tears with the hundred dollar bills. Yeah, yeah. Point. I love it. I love yeah. that meme. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is actually a really interesting passage. We actually just went through this passage in our small group. Us too. Um, yeah. yeah, nice. Um, but in Mark. The Mark but version. in Mark, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Mark. Uh, but it's structured. It's the same. Pretty much. Account, same. yeah. Yeah. Even the context uh, is the same. Yeah. Uh, so... This is a really interesting passage because it really gets to the heart of um, what good is. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is what prompts this whole sermon when he says, uh, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's the fundamental question. And Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Um, So I want to leave the rest of it for later on because I think there's an interesting way to tie that back in. But Pastor Lee kind of uses that, that first thought as the springboard for the sermon, um, no one is good except God alone, uh, which poses the question, what does it mean to be good? Well, uh, it, it sure does pose that question. Um, being uh, good is found in within God's nature. How's that? Mm. So, 
What if I was to say a cheeseburger is good? It's relative. Like, so what's like, the difference between, like, okay, you made some steaks, man, those steaks were good, and God is good. Yeah. Well, what's the difference between those two? Yeah. So the steaks. I mean, like, we've all had a bad steak. It's like you go to you know some restaurant and you're like, I want it medium rare on the rare side. That's how I like my steak. Mm-hmm. And it comes back and it's like medium or medium well. It's like. Not good. Mm -hmm. That is not good. Relative to the steak that I was expecting and hoping for, that was just not good. Mm -hmm. Right? And so if you have a good steak, that's just, it's relative as far as like the continuum and spectrum of how, you know, steaks are cooked and how steaks are presented to you. Right? So it's a relative goodness. Yeah. And that that goodness would be subjective Mm -hmm. because... As Pastor Lee likes, he doesn't like medium rare. Right. He likes well done, like hockey puck. But does he really like those? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he can't argue about it because he's yeah. still chewing. He yeah. um he likes to operate as a the high priest. Yeah. Like, get a burnt offering <laughs> yeah. going. It's, yeah. He likes to be biblical like that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not we're not beholden to the law anymore. That's um, right. <laughs> Thankfully. Uh, the sacrifice of bulls could never take away sins, as uh, Hebrew says. Anyways, mm-hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so even that would be a, a relative good. It's uh, And subjective, like you or, said. Yeah, 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 subjective good. Um, and that good would almost be more to, like, your preference. Correct. Right. Um, this is good, meaning I like it, or right. it's something I enjoy. Yeah. Uh, completely different word here, though. Right. The, the, the good aspect of... No one is good. Only God is good. Correct. Um, it's kind of like um, the uh, we went years ago to visit uh, Sam, her family uh, up in Minnesota, and they have White Castles up there, like the burger places. Mm-hmm. And so we were getting to talking about it. Like I've never had a White Castle burger because I mean that we don't mm-hmm. have them really down this way. And like oh, you've got to try it. They're so good. Spoiler alert: They are not good. <laughs> I've never had. Have you had one? Yeah. No. I that, love it. You love White Castle burgers? Yeah, I grew up eating those. Okay. Like they come in the microwave. You microwave them? Oh, you get the, oh, yeah. you get the frozen ones? So when I go up to, like, when we go up to St. Louis every year, they have White Castle, and I try to convince everybody, let's go to White Castle, and I get vetoed every year. Well, but it's relative, right? So for, like, Texans, no. what's a good burger? Whataburger. That's, like, king, I kinda right? Li- I kind of like In N Out. You're wrong, too. <laughs> <laughs> So I've gone okay. Again, so, it's subjective. It just goes to So the older I get, so I, I always had like those like kind of traditional burgers, you know, like you form them, put them on the grill or whatever. I've really grown to like smash burgers. Have y'all had smash burgers? Like like not like the the I think there's a a uh, restaurant called Smash Burger. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like the actual like way you make burgers. It's where you um you put like a circle of ground beef on there and then you like uh, press it down. Mm-hmm. Have y'all ever had that? No. Oh man, it's good. So it's just the same ground beef, just smashed. Yeah. So okay. So so a normal um, one, like you form the patty right and throw it on there, and then you just flip it. You know, however many times, whatever. Uh, the smash burger. The idea is to smash it, like you put it on, like burning hot, n- not a grill. You have to do it like on a flat top, uh, like burning hot, and you like smash it down as thin as you possibly can. And the the goal is to uh, make it like uh, get like a nice crust mm-hmm. on it on both sides, man. I like it. I, I really like it. Okay, so wait, is this like White Castle good or In and Out good or like Whataburger good? So Whataburger would be more like the form patty, like on a grill or yeah. like a uh, um, like a Burger King. Yeah. Um, where In and Out, I don't think they do smash burgers, but it's closer to a smash burger. Um, I think White Castle is more of a smash. No, 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 it's not. Because um, they have the, the square patties, right? Yeah, so White Castle is more like a cube steak instead of like a normal steak. It's, it's yeah. like a, a knockoff burger. Because um, White Castle takes like onions and they cook it in the onions, uh, I think, right? Uh, I mean, there's onions on it. I don't Yeah, so, so if my memory serves me correctly... Um, they they put onions or no sorry they put the burger down then put onions on top of the burger. Oh, gosh, I don't I don't I don't remember. We'd have to look it up. Anyways, <laughs> what's the point of this? 
It's good as subjective. And good relative. as subjective because Michael likes White Castle. I've never had White Castle. You don't like White Castle. Um, I, I was just disappointed. I was expecting Whataburger caliber food, mm-hmm. and that's it. Was like microwave burgers, you know. Well, and then you could also take the approach. <laughs> of, I, see, I knew it was a microwave burger, so when I went, I was already ready for the microwave burger. Right. So it's really an expectation thing. Yeah. yeah. And they were talking yeah. it up too, man. Like, oh, these are so good. Whatever else, like. We have burger places that are really good. Have y'all heard of Whataburger? They're like, no. Uh, no. Anyway, this is so, so, so when you get into a relative good, yeah. you've got you like it, you don't like it, and then you might have me where I'm like, there's room for all, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah. like all ways are good. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and it's like sometimes I want an in and out burger, and sometimes I want a water burger, and sometimes I want... I've never had White Castle, but... They're at Walmart. You buy a six-pack for like six dollars. <laughs> yes. And they're like tiny, too, right? They're like yeah. itty-bitty little they're things, like, little like sliders. sliders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyways, <laughs> pulling this metaphor back to the center, um, you can... It's all relative, right? Yeah. Um, that's not what Jesus is talking about here. Correct. When it applies to God, he's, he's making an absolute objective fact only god is good correct and meaning there's an objective standard to it um in the the whole conversation here is a, a morality conversation mm-hmm. that he's having right because jesus starts to list out commands right? yeah. follow these commands live morally this way and then you'll be good and so on and so forth um i, I think jesus was getting at something there which we can hop on in just a minute but pulling it back to the morality claim no one is good Morally, I think speaking, except God, mm-hmm. um, I think he's pulling it back to God's holiness. Yeah, right. Uh, God is separate and and set apart from everyone else, objectively speaking. Mm-hmm. Right. Correct. Okay. Which gets us to our first point. Right. Yeah. Only God is good. <laughs> right. And so um, Psalm one nineteen, uh, Pastor Lee mentioned, which there's a number of verses. That should, should we read the whole chapter of Psalm? <laughs> No. It's like a, I've it's been like, waiting to make that joke. <laughs> was it like 150 verses or something like that? Yeah, it's long, yeah. Uh, Psalm 119, verse 68 says, You are good, God, and you do what is good. Teach me your statutes. So, And there's lots of verses uh, that gets into mm-hmm. God being good, God being holy. Um, but the fact that God is good and that all good things come from God leads to a question. If God is good and all good things and, and all he does is good, then why can't we partake in paraphernalia? God made it, right? Like what kind of paraphernalia? Um, I, I don't want to use the actual words because YouTube oh. will strike us down. Um, oh, uh, oh. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. Natural illegal substances. Gotcha. Natu- or illegal God made subs- it yeah. <laughs> and God is good and everything that God does is good. So why not? Well, we go. <laughs> this is a softball, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it goes. Uh, it goes back to the garden. Michael, uh, you can take it over if you want. No, I just like. I like it. This is a softball, right? Like this one's easy. Yeah. It's like that was. Uh, you know, you'll hear people say, uh, "Man, how is it that anybody can make a plant illegal?" Uh, you know, God made everything, and everything's good, and it's like. Making a plant illegal is one of the very first things God does. Is, mm-hmm. uh, is mm-hmm. said uh, you can eat from any uh, fruit uh, or the fruit of any tree in the garden except that one. Boom! It was mm-hmm. illegal. It's what like God Himself did. Mm-hmm. So just because it's in, it's part of God's uh, creation doesn't mean that it's okay morally for us to partake in that. Yeah, and I think, um, and I, I pose that question. Lee didn't mention anything about that. No, he um, didn't. that's just usually a because because Lee talked about okay, God is good. Everything that God does is good. Everything God created was good. And usually the argument that comes after that is okay. Well, if God created everything good, then I can go do all this, right? right. Um, and there's there's lots of kind of sub arguments as to why that that may not n- exactly be the case. One. Uh, uh, we have the curse and the fall, and so right. we are, at the very least, if you want to take a, a conservative uh, viewpoint, we're 8,000 years past the cre- creation, mm-hmm. and that's if you take a young earth approach, take an old earth approach, you know, hundreds of years, millions of years, whatever. Yeah. Um, either way, we're well far apart from the initial 
creation of God and the curse has affected a lot of those things. And mm-hmm. so things are distorted now. Yeah. And so so you always have to take a grain of salt with that. Mosquitoes. Then you also do what? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are a thing. Uh, yes. They uh, bite. Yeah, and you also have to take into account uh, the aspect of, yes, God, every, everything that God created is good, yet also God created everything with a purpose. Mm-hmm. And so it's only good if used within that intended purpose. Mm-hmm. And so once you veer off that purpose, you can take a good thing and make it not good oh, yeah. anymore. Yeah, right? and we have a tendency to do that, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. Um, so anyways. That's putting it lightly. <laughs> doesn't really have anything to do with this particular point. I just I just wanted to <laughs> throw that out there. To just throw that out there. Um but God is good. God is holy. God is that part, and everything that He does is good. Always a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the cool thing: we can experience the goodness of God. Yep. Right? Taste and see the Lord is good. Psalm 34. Oh, we should sing this. One. I know. Yeah. I was I was sitting there listening to the sermon. I'm like, what a missed opportunity. Yeah, okay. Roxanne. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and I, I love that song. That song's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but we can experience the goodness of God. And he mentions Moses here, uh, which is a great passage, uh, where Moses is meeting with God, and Moses says, uh, you know, uh, show me your glory, and God says, I will cause my goodness to pass by you. Um, And do you remember what happened after that? Yeah, he turned white. Yeah. Like his hair, and he was shiny, mm -hmm. he was glowing. More than just turned white, he was... He was glowing, Mm -hmm. right? He was like radiating the goodness of Mm -hmm. God. Yeah. Which is, that's like, that's crazy to think about. It's like, is that, you know, being in God's presence someday, right, in heaven is like, is that what we're going to be like? Are we going to also radiate God's goodness? We're all just floating orbs of light. Yeah. It's like, have you ever thought about that? Uh, I have not. Um, What I have thought about is uh, there is no sun because God is the source of light. That one kind of boggles my mind a little bit. Um, yeah. It's intense. It's intense. Yeah. Um, which, speaking of tents, the Israelites were intense. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dad joke. Dad joke. <laughs> uh, yes. So, uh, Moses was radiating, which tells us this, that when you experience the goodness of God, it changes you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, do you have any thoughts on... Generally, that yeah, that was. Uh, I mean, and he even had to wear a veil so he didn't freak out the rest of the Israelites. Mm-hmm. Like he was so glowy, you know. I've had to cover my face not to freak other people out, but not because of radiance. It's it, just because I was ugly. Oh, I was gonna say, was it to keep the ladies at bay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just so attractive. Um, Randy was like, anytime we go out, yeah, time to cover up. Where's time the veil? To cover. Yeah, where the veil. <laughs> No, yeah. I, I didn't have that problem. Right. Yeah. Well, it's uh, uh and I, <laughs> I think I think Pastor Lee really, you know, he uh, when, when he was going through this in in his sermon, you know, Moses he had the privilege of speaking with God uh, in the tent of meeting. He had the privilege of speaking with God uh, up on the mountain uh, even before that, and so, um, but he wanted more, right? He uh, he was already experiencing this amazing relationship with God that, um, you know, it, you kind of have to wonder. So like in, in scripture, um, you know, we, there's a lot of, it seems like as we're reading, there's a lot of times that God like comes and speaks to, to different people, right. In different times. Mm -hmm. So like Abraham is a great example. God comes and speaks to him multiple times, but I mean, in the grand scheme of things, like those are all pretty, pretty well spread out. And he doesn't usually talk to people for that long at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, Moses, on the other hand, I mean, he was up on the mountain with God for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a long time, mm-hmm. you know? And so for Moses, right, to have that, you know, maybe, you know, uh, and Scripture doesn't doesn't give us details on all of the people that, that God uh, spoke with, right? But it kind of makes you wonder. It's like, did Moses get to talk with God more, like, than any other person up to that point, other than, like, maybe Adam and Eve? Um, I don't know. Probably, yeah, yeah. And that's what it. That's what it. How it kind of reads, mm-hmm. but um, it's like, and so he had that already, which is like that's a lot. But he wanted more, right? Mm-hmm. He wanted to experience uh, more of God's goodness and and be able to see His glory. And mm-hmm. it's uh, it's it's also sort of like once we get a uh, you know taste and see that the Lord is good, it's like we want more. Mm-hmm. You know, we want more of Him. 
Yeah. It's like uh, White Castle burgers. No, not like White Castle burgers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like uh, Whataburger or Reds or uh, mm-hmm. Skinny's down in Weatherford, you know. I've never been there. <laughs> You've never been to Skinny's? <laughs> no. Dude, we were, uh, so my brother and I, we used to uh, ride our bikes down to the uh, gas station uh, when we were growing up before we could, like, drive. And um, and actually, they, they had a good burger, too. But there was a lady that stopped us one time, and she was from New York State. And she uh, she asked us if Skinny's in Weatherford was still around. And we're like, oh, yeah, it's over there off Palapeno Street. And... Um, and she's like, well, uh, that's what she does, though, is travel around and eat at all the best burger places in the country. And she said that that one is one of the best in the entire country. Interesting. I know. I was like, we'll oh, have to try it. Like, I knew it was good. But Michael, what are you doing for lunch today? Working on my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Skinny's, dude. I got wrangled into this. <laughs> you need a sermon I've been to illustration. Skinny's, though. It's good. Yeah, it it's is. a good burger. Would you say the best in the country? I'd go Five Guys. I like five. five Guys Burger quite a bit. I like Five Guys too. It's good. Yeah, I mean, but it's fourteen bucks a burger, so yeah. don't eat there often. Yeah. Yes. Can't okay. afford it. <laughs> yeah. Are you hungry yet? Do you want a burger? I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So maybe, maybe we should get sponsorships. Like sponsored oh, by sure. Skinny. Yeah, we are. Podcast brought to you by Skinny. That's yeah, right. See what they say. <laughs> What were we talking about? I don't remember. Uh, um, Moses and wanting more. Wanting yes, more yeah, w- wanting more of God. Um, once you experience the goodness of God and the uh, and the holiness of God, and that's really the the trajectory of salvation mm-hmm. and in Christianity. It's not that oh, I'm doing these things to, out of begrudging submission. Right. It's no, I'm doing these things because I've experienced God and know God, and I want more. Right. That. Right. Hundred um, percent. Um, yep. Uh, which leads us into God created us all to be good. Now, I found this one to be the most interesting one, uh, and and really, there's kind of a lot to unpack here because God created us all to be good. But what falls? What, what comes in between that? Uh, the fall. The fall. Yeah. Right. Capital F fall. <laughs> yeah. Um, the fall. Uh, sin. The curse. Genesis all of that. Three. Yep. Yeah. And so there's this. This weird, not weird, there's this tricky component to it where God created us to be good. And and again, when we say good, we mean holy, set Mm -hmm. apart. Uh, Yet, there's a kink in that, which is sin and the fall and the curse. Yet, there's still a path Mm -hmm. to be good, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Now... What is that path? That's that's the question, right? Mm-hmm. Because the, and this really gets back to the heart of what was going on with the rich young ruler, yeah. right? Um, Michael, can we pull that passage back up? So on the rich young ruler, uh, so good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, "Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone." Which is funny here because he gives the statement, "No one is good except God alone." Then seemingly. He gives a list of how to be good, mm-hmm. right? How to uh, come against or be on that level with God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. What's he quoting here? Uh, that's the second half of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Uh, and um, so he's essentially stating, here's the, the path. If, if you want to get technical about it, here's the path to becoming good, like God is good. Now, how does this guy respond? Uh, hey, I've done all those things since I was a child. <laughs> First off, have yeah. you? Have you? Yeah, um, doubt, doubt it. But uh, but the interesting thing here is that in reality, no one can live up to those things. Now, uh, you probably noticed this because you y'all's group studied this as well. Yeah. What did Jesus omit here from the Ten Commandments? All of the commandments that have to do with God. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, so if you don't know, there's the commandment, the Ten Commandments are broken up into what they call two tables mm-hmm. of commandments. So the first table is the first four commandments that deal with your um, relationship with God. And the second table of commandments is the next six that have to deal with your relationship with others. So Jesus only quotes the second half of these. Now, I think that. There's probably speculation as to why he only quoted the second half. I think it's a a um, a kind of parabolic 
form of judgment yeah. on the guy mm-hmm. um, because the guy clearly thought he had achieved goodness, mm-hmm. right? And so Jesus quoting the second half of the commandments and the guy not even realizing they skipped over the first four is like a a judgment on itself yeah. that the guy is so disconnected from the purpose of the commandments that he's he's honing in only on the the uh, the tangibles. Yeah. Right. Uh, but you've got the first four, which one might argue is the most important ones, right? Yeah. Um, uh, our relationship with God. We can we can do all the external things, but if our internal isn't right, the external doesn't matter. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, so so in this, Jesus on on how to become good was Jesus referred to the law. Mm-hmm. But then that poses the question: We can't follow the law. Mm-hmm. We've all sinned, right? Uh, was it First John says that if you say that you have no sin, you're a liar, yeah. right? And the truth uh, is not in you. And the truth is not in you. And so we can't live up to the law. But Jesus provides that as the path to become good. Mm-hmm. How do we reconcile that? Well, Jesus perfectly kept all the commandments. Well, good for Jesus. Yeah, that's good. And it's good news for us. Bad for... Oh, oh, okay. Okay. How is that good for us? Because, okay, again, God created us to be good in the beginning. Sin... Okay. Let me make sure... Back it up. Back it up. Okay. God created us to be good. Mm -hmm. Sin entered the world. And we were good. Um, Mankind was good. Yeah, mankind was good. Very good. Adam and Eve... (laughs) Very good. (laughs) Adam and Eve, perfect, holy, um, no sin. Correct. Right? But they sinned, so they went down, mm-hmm. right? All humanity went down, yeah. and we're, we're born into that. And so now we need a, a, a path back to goodness, mm-hmm. and the path back to goodness is the law. Or at least, like, like that's what's presented, or yeah. right? Like, like, how do you be good? Okay, mm-hmm. the law, right? Follow the law. The problem is we can't, right? right? So there's a, in the plan, there's, there's a kink in the plan that we cannot become Good. What's the remedy to that kink? Jesus came and fulfilled the law. Uh, he he kept the entire law perfectly, and so uh, and that's that was part of his mission. So right? we're it's, so so the path to goodness that we couldn't achieve, Jesus could achieve. Jesus and did and, and did. he did achieve that. And so when we are found in Christ, all of his goodness is transferred to us. Um, it's like when we're declared righteous, that's what God is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so whenever Jesus was on, on the cross, all of our sin was put on him, right? There's that double imputation that's going on there. Mm-hmm. So again, what that, all that means is Jesus gets all of our sin and uh, the punishment for that sin. We receive Jesus' goodness. That's what, that double, that's what double imputation means. Mm-hmm. And so... Jesus came and fulfilled the law, and it's on that basis that we can be declared righteous, be declared good. Mm-hmm. Yep, but it's not on anything that we do. It's all on, based on what Christ has done. So the path to righteousness, which, which was the law, mm-hmm. we couldn't do it. So because of Jesus' ability to do it and doing it, um, we now have a path to righteousness outside of the law. Yes, and outside of ourselves. Yeah, through Jesus, Mm -hmm. right? Jesus becomes um, the ladder, Jacob's ladder. Yeah, not not you, Jacob. uh, The other uh, one. The other Jacob. The Uh, original one. What was it? uh, So as mentioned, I I think it's uh, Genesis 17, where uh, Jacob has the dream, and he sees a ladder to heaven. And then I think it's John 2, right, that that Jesus references uh, himself as that ladder. Yeah. Right, as the path to You'll heaven. see angels ascending and descending yes. on the Son of Man. Yeah. yeah. And then you got John uh, 16, 17, where Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Essentially, Jesus is this pathway. So for all the Old Testament, you have the law that's laid out, the, mm-hmm. the Ten Commandments laid out as here is the standard of holiness. Here's the standard of goodness. Uh, here is God right, right. here. Um, Which is a reflection of God's character and who he is, yep. right, the law. Yep. And we couldn't live up to that. So therefore, Jesus fulfilled the law and commandments, took on our not goodness, and now if we place our faith in him through grace, we now are given his goodness. Mm-hmm. 
And we are able to be good again. Yes. Through Jesus. Correct. <laughs> yes. Now, not perfectly. At least like right? in the sense of like justified. Right. Yeah. Right. Correct. So we're declared to be righteous. We're declared to be holy and good. Now, and then it's uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit then to for us to grow in uh, being progressively more holy in our lives. Mm-hmm. And that gets into the, like the other half of it. Yeah. So so the salvation thing, you know, we've talked about, you know, uh, you know, save something from something, save for something. Uh, what do you say from? Okay, sin, death, shame, guilt, all that. Um, that's the justification aspect of, of salvation. Yeah. But then there's the other half salvation of what we're saved for. Um, we're saved for uh, sanctification. We're saved for knowing God more. Yeah. Uh, and and that's where you can kind of divide this term becoming good into those two categories. Right. So right. so we've. We're created to to be good and have become good through Christ in justification, mm-hmm. meaning like we are declared holy. Correct. Yet there's still a, a path of growing in goodness, mm-hmm. which would be more on the sanctification side of things. Yes. Uh, which Pastor Lee gets into, um, yeah. where he references Luke six: mm-hmm. uh, For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs aren't gathered from thorn bushes or grapes picked from the bramble bush. A good person produces good out of the good stored up in his heart. Evil produces evil person produces evil out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. Mm-hmm. So this is really more of a, a sanctification aspect because if we look at the the true goodness. None of us have goodness, right? right? Because we're, we have sin. We have sinful nature. Um, so the goodness that we do have on the sanctification level is from God and the Spirit mm-hmm. and coming out of there. Um, uh, yeah, any thoughts? Um, yeah, and I, I really liked it, the the question, okay, what is it that we're storing up in our hearts? Mm-hmm. Because it comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it comes out. Uh, sooner or later, um, like kids are really good at bringing it oh, up. a hundred percent, they are. <laughs> um, but it's like uh, you know, uh, you mentioned when you preached uh, earlier this month about uh, Ravi Zacharias and how you know that whole thing sort of played out, and and how news came out about you know the things that he was doing and involved in, and um, you know, and any time that there's any very public. Christian figure who falls in a spectacular way, it's like they fell actually a long time before mm-hmm. that. It's like, but it comes out, right? Yeah. It's not like, um, it's like, oh my gosh, uh, like this is suddenly the moment, right? It's, yeah, it's a like slow... People don't wake up murderers. Right, right, right. Uh, and that's why Jesus... Oh, okay, well, I'll make the statement first before I get into that. People don't wake up murderers. People don't wake up adulterers. Right. Right. Uh, and that's why Jesus got into it's not about murder. That's important. <laughs> that's don't, don't murder. That's yeah. that's good. Um, but it's not about that. It's about not hating people in your Correct. heart. And it's not just about not sleeping with other people that aren't your spouse. It's um, it's about lust. It's about right. what's going on in your heart. Because if you can if you can get the lust under control, the adultery will take care of itself. Yeah, that's if, you, right. if you can get the hate under control, the murder will take care of mm-hmm. itself. Right. Um, I, like I don't wake up in the morning. <laughs> And say, Chris, you're not going to sleep around today. Don't do it. Don't even think about <laughs> right? it. Like, look yourself in the mirror. <laughs> like, give it yourself yeah. a pep talk. <laughs> right. That's a that's a bad starting point. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it may not be um, a terrible starting. Oh, point, okay, okay. But we we want to be we want to go deeper than that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the deeper if so if it's the, good not to sleep around. If right? the boundary is don't sleep with someone else. Right. No, I know what you mean. There's a problem. <laughs> The like, boundary. Right, how close can I get to that boundary? Yeah. And oh no, I fell across the boundary. The better question would be: um, I want to only uh, be after my wife. <laughs> how, do, how do we? Say I was this? wondering how uh, you were going to phrase that. <laughs> I want to love my wife well. I want to honor my wife well. I want, and not just in my actions, but in my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a better starting point. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't want to wake up today and be like, "How do I not kill my coworkers?" <laughs> But we appreciate that. It's, it's a, <laughs> a better question is, how do I honor my coworkers? <laughs> right. Um, this is fun. Yeah, Michael, you got anything to add to this? I just want to know why you want to kill me. <laughs> what did I do to you? 
It's we push them on the announcements. But on a real note, you talk about soaring up things and how this goodness and and the things that we have eventually overflow. And for me, a real wake-up call was when I see what I'm storing up in my heart overflow in my kids. And so I Mm -hmm. see my kids come, and they have a short temper. Mm -hmm. And my kids are not patient with people. And my kids do not love people. And I'm like... Gosh, they learned all that from me. Yeah, we talked about. <laughs> was that last week that we talked about that? I think that, it was. That kids yeah. are like little mirrors. Oh yeah, uh, of Absolutely. herself. Well, and and that's the thing. When I was thinking about this, is my kids have a great ability to to press my buttons, uh, and and they'll they'll get me to a point where I just lose my temper, right? And then then the the question. So I, so I could in the same way I could approach it and say. Um, okay, how can I not be angry with my kids? Wrong question, right? The better question is, um, what am I feeding into my heart that's allowing this overflow of anger mm-hmm. to come out? That's that's a better root question of yeah. it. Uh, and so, so the 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 better solution wouldn't be, okay, how can I not be angry? The better solution would be, okay, how can I fill my life with good things so that the overflow isn't anger but love and patience? Yeah. Yeah. Which is what Jesus is getting at here. If yes. you only focus on the externals, right, you're missing the point, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're missing. Uh, I always tell the story of uh, when I first moved to Azel, I was going to Chick Fil A, not Chick Fil A, Chicken Express, uh, and and there was this like intersection where I was turning in to the left. There was a guy turning into the right, and there's a person turning out, and they were right in the middle of the turn where no one could get in. And so she had to leave before anyone could get in. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't. She was just sitting there. And the guy on the other side of me was just losing his mind. Like, you would, I don't know what was going on, but like, he was just like screaming and yelling and and stuff like this. And I thought to myself, this, this is not what this guy is upset about. Yeah. Like, like there is, there is a million other things going wrong in his life, and this is the funnel that oh, yeah. everything's coming into. And hundred uh, percent. And and so that's just a, a good a good uh, thing for us to recognize. You know, if you're if you struggle with your spouse or, or your kids or your coworkers or or whatever in your life that just sets you over the edge, um, you know, a good question to ask is how, how can I mitigate that in the moment yeah that that's a fine question to ask and and how can i process and and deal with these things in the moment but a better question beyond that is to ask okay what am i feeding into my life that's causing that to be the overflow correct and uh and yeah and uh, you know speaking of mitigation i mean one of the things you know that's just a reality as you know as we are growing in sanctification and and working to kill sin and, and shed the sin that's in our lives is like none of us are perfect and we're not going to be perfect, mm-hmm. right? And so, you know, how how we go about responding whenever we uh, the the overflow is not good uh, also is uh, very telling of who we are, um, you know, at, at our core as as believers. So like uh, you know, sometimes I'll lose my temper with my kids. Like I've had enough. You guys have y'all have been wearing me down all day. My, the patience is gone, and you know I'll I'll just lose it on them sometimes, and and so uh, not often, but just every once in a while, mm-hmm. and not often like once a day, <laughs> <laughs> once an hour, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, but the the key then is okay. You know, sit down. I'll sit down and think about you know about what led me to that point, and then you know like I've got to go apologize and mm-hmm. ask for forgiveness. And uh, and I think that's uh, that's one of the things that marks believers out, even from from non believers, mm-hmm. is like owning that mm-hmm. and uh, and and being willing to go and humbly ask, yeah, even our kids, right, for for forgiveness when we've we've wronged them mm-hmm. uh, somehow, yeah, you know? yep, or anybody it doesn't have to be just kids. It's like if you mess up, own it and uh, and then repent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other thoughts, Michael? Well. It, it talks about how Moses wanted more, right? He wanted more mm-hmm. of God's goodness. And I think of the instances in my life where I have a stronghold or a struggle, and all of a sudden God has got it to a point where I'm overcoming those things. And I'm just like, dude, this is awesome. 
I'm overcoming. I want more. And mm-hmm. I, that, that's kind of us wanting more of God's goodness as we're learning. We're, we're mm-hmm. digging into Scripture. We're in community. We're praying for each other. And then when we see the victories, and we're just like, I want more victories. Mm-hmm. This is a good feeling not to lose it on my kids. It's a good feeling to have patience and when I'm out in public with other people. It's a good feeling. All of these things are great, and I, I want more of that. So I don't yeah. know. I'm just reiterating what you've on... already said. Uh, people in public, do you lose it on people in public? It's hard. People, <laughs> people are hard. People are hard to deal with. And if you don't agree with me, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can be. Dude, I'll tell you, Costco, I love Costco. But, man, when that place is busy, it's stressful. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, it's just so many people. And then you got the at t salesman <laughs> trying to get you, and I'm like... <laughs> And it might not even be that that like like the instance with the Chick Fil or the Chicken Express thing. It's it's not the people. It's everything else that I've dealt with all day, mm-hmm. and it's just coming out on the people. Yeah. So the and I'd say, lines. And, I'd say yeah. what it's usually. So so here's one thing I've recognized. Um, I'm like a very like I, I'm I'm efficiency. I don't know if y'all realize that. I'm an efficiency person. I uh, will. Yeah. I I will whatever task I have to do. Often I will figure out what's the most efficient way to do this task and then implement that and all that. And so with kids, I don't know if y'all realize this, kids throw a kink in all that. 100%. There is no efficiency with kids. No. There is like getting in the car isn't getting in the car. Right. <laughs> it's, right. it's like there's a process to it. I left my so, toy inside. You should have thought of that before. Yeah. You know? And so <laughs> what I what I found like really kind of throws me over the edge is I will be like in efficiency mode. Mm -hmm. Like when when we go to the zoo, Um, okay, we're going to the zoo. Let's get in the car. Let's go to the zoo. That's the plan. There's nothing else to do, but that's the plan. And so uh, inevitably in the process from we're going to the zoo to getting in the car, it won't take three minutes like the most efficient way would. It would take 15 minutes because we got to do all these different things, get the kids ready. And that will just start to frustrate me. And I will just get more and more... Um, uh, impatient and uh, angry and mad and and I have to like ask myself like okay I'm I'm upset because I'm becoming impatient because I want to go fast but then why why do I want to go fast we're not we're not on a time limit here it's not like uh, we have to go somewhere else after the zoo we, we literally have all day it can take as long as we want to get there and so it it just kind of comes back to like my own like selfish desires of like I want it to go this way and things aren't going my way so ironically I'm going to throw a tantrum like my toddler does when they don't get their way uh anyways yeah it's just kind of for me it's it's recognizing uh that all, all that say is uh usually what leads to my anger is my own selfishness yeah that's that's the, the the final point. Of yeah, it. true. pretty much. Yeah. Uh, it's true. I think it's probably it's true for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, like I wanted it to look this way, and y'all are not making it look that way. <laughs> Anyways, yep. All right. Well, that's the sermon uh, from Sunday. Finding the goodness of God. Only God is good, but we can experience God's goodness, and through experiencing God's goodness, we can be good as well. Indeed, we can we can come back to the original plan that God created us to be good. Sin through a kink in that. But through God's goodness and Jesus' uh, holiness and death on the cross, we are now offered His goodness. Amen. So, Pastor did say that it's like the kids tasting chocolate for the first time. So, if you're talking about the goodness of God, what flavor of chocolate is the goodness of God? Now we're back to relativism. I would say it's like the Lindor, the little round ones. Is that the one with like the creaminess on the inside? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Some of them do. Yeah. Do they all? I thought it was only out at Christmas, and I found out it's year-round, which is a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so this isn't really a good, good question. I'm not a huge sweets guy. Um, I like the Lindor. I think those are pretty good, but I'm just I'm not a connoisseur of sweets. Yeah, well, I, I know what Pastor's talking about. There's a, a GIF out there that um, there's a little kid, and the caption is the Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> And uh, this little kid, uh, they're offering him a chocolate ice cream cone. And so, like, he he kind of takes a little lick, and then, like, his eyes get real wide. He looks down at it and then goes at it with both hands. And it's, mm. it's like, yes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. I wish he would have showed that on Sunday morning because it's great. It's greatness. Nice. Yeah. 
Milk chocolate. Milk dark chocolate. chocolate's gross. Agreed. I don't like dark mm. chocolate. I don't want that Jacob, healthy stuff. What, what chocolate is it? Reese's Fast Breaks. Oh, okay. That's not chocolate. That's Kaysen, a candy bar. Kaysen would agree. Yeah, yeah, but that's there's chocolate on it and in it. Yeah, I guess. Peanut butter chocolate, man. Oh. Oh, you know what's real good? Weakness. This isn't chocolate, but uh, y'all know Melt ice cream? The It's on Magnolia down in Fort Worth. It's an ice cream shop. Anyways, they have a what's called the caramel coffee shake, and it's one scoop of salt, uh, like salted caramel ice cream, one scoop of their espresso ice cream, and then it's uh, made into a shake with caramel drizzle. It's very good. It's weird. I've heard about that twice this week. Never heard of Melt. Up to this day, and someone else has told me about that. The, about and the it's shake? only Tuesday. Yeah. But the, I think it was Jackson Holt. No, I don't know. Someone was mentioning Only to Tuesday. Me. Oh, oh, it yeah, was Tuesday. What I'm saying when is, I'm two days into the week. I've never heard of Melt, and I've heard it twice this week. Hey, we can go to Skinny's. Is that what yeah. it's called? That's we, a trip. We can go Skinny's and then to yeah. Melt. Um, all right. I think we got a plan for lunch. <laughs> it's expensive, though. Mm-hmm. You'll probably spend like eight and nine bucks on that shake. Is it worth but, it? Oh, man, it's good. It's good. It's good. Anyways, talk about the goodness of God revealed through his creation there. Um, <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> Let's move now uh, into our Bad Doctrine of the Week. It's the Bad Doctrine of the Week. All right. So, I didn't plan this, but the Bad Doctrine of the Week actually is pretty applicable uh, to this, because Jesus uh, talks to this young, rich young ruler about the commandments and really kind of getting more behind the intent of the commandments. Uh, uh, so today, Ben Shapiro, you know Ben Shapiro, yeah. right? Michael, do you know Ben Shapiro? I know Ben Shapiro. All right. I'm actually a Ben Shapiro fan, um, but he has found his way into the bad doctrine of the week. Oh. Uh, because uh, if you don't know, uh, Ben Shapiro is a great... Um, proponent of conservative values. However, he's not Christian. Correct. He's Jewish. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes his uh, Jewish background comes through uh, in some of the statements he makes around Judeo-Christianity values and things like that. So here's a a, a post that Ben Shapiro made. It says this, In my view, the most important commandment in the Bible is to respect your mother and father. Parents represent tradition and impart wisdom. Without such respect, one is likely to drown in chaos. Not a bad statement in itself, but what is something from Jesus' words that would contradict the statement that the most important commandment is to honor your father and mother? Well, I mean... Right there at the beginning of his, his, is this a tweet or is this a Facebook? Uh, it's Facebook. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> um, I was going to say tweet, but then are they called tweets still? Because it's X instead of Twitter. They're called know. tweeters. Tweeters. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just I mean, he prefaces, They're called he prefaces the statement with, in my view. So it's like all bets are off, right? It's mm-hmm. like, oh, that's, that's his truth, mm-hmm. right? So it can't be bad doctrine. Is that right? Sure can. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding, of course. Um, no, Jesus said uh, he. Jesus had this question posed to him. The exact like, question. Yeah, yeah, like, teacher, what is the greatest commandment? It's like, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you know, love your neighbor as yourself. Like that's the sum of everything, right? Mm-hmm. But if you had to pick one, it's uh, love the Lord. Yeah. I thought that was funny, and all of the comments were that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your like. We talk. The Bible answers this, but he's Jewish, right? He, he doesn't. He doesn't follow the New Testament. Um, you know, at best, he thinks Jesus was just a good teacher. Um, yeah, but the the kicker, the kicker on that one is okay. He's Jewish. Okay. Um, the the it was it was a scribe, wasn't it? That came and asked him that question. It wasn't one of the Pharisees. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a scribe. I'm not sure. Or yeah, and and he said. Um, in response, so Jesus responds to the question, says, he tells him the greatest commandment, and then after that, uh, the the scribe says, uh, "No, you're right. Uh, you've spoken well. Like this was one of the times when like the guy coming to ask the questions actually agrees with Jesus, and he was Jewish." Oh yeah, uh huh. I see. Yeah. Uh-huh. And because normally it's the Pharisees coming to ask him questions to to trip him up, and then he turns it on him and makes him look really really bad. Like, it's a, not, it's the Pharisees. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So uh, yeah, and I guess not all the Pharisees were, you know, totally dense 
um, you know, maybe. And who knows what his motives well, and, were. And maybe it was a different one because uh, this one doesn't have that that you were talking about. Oh. Uh, it was just a much more shorter conversation, which is a greatest commandment in the law. And then Jesus just answered. Yeah. I love the Lord your God. Uh, maybe I'll look and see where yeah, that's So at. maybe it's a different uh, instance. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things. I, I just thought it was funny uh, um, that when posing the thought, here's the greatest commandment, that the Bible actually answers that question. And he actually, it didn't line up with what uh, the Bible uh, proposed it. But again, to be fair to him, he's not Christian. Uh, right. He's Jewish, so. Right. But uh, yeah, even if, let me see if I can find it. It's not in Matthew. Was I dreaming that? You probably I think were. Jacob's going to be the bad doctrine of the week next week. Yeah, he's just making up scripture, man. <laughs> what yeah. am I thinking of? I don't know. Thinking of judgment. That's what you're thinking of. Anyways, I just thought it's not as wild as our normal bad doctrines, but, you know, we can just have fun with it. All right. Well, while Jacob scrambles to prove himself <laughs> right, uh, Michael, you got any final thoughts? This was fun. This was, did you have fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> y'all let us know in the comments, what do y'all think? If you had to pick a uh, greatest commandment, which one would you pick? It's in Luke. <laughs> it's in, okay, well, okay. Uh, okay, let's let Jacob. Okay, himself. so it's, it's similar. So it's Luke 10, verse 25. And behold, a lawyer stood up, lawyer, okay, and put him to the test. So motives, maybe, uh, saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. So this one's flipped. So this one isn't necessarily asking the question of what's the greatest commandment. Jesus was more getting at what's the what's the heart of the commandments, right? Right. Um, Which really, again, breaks down those two tables that we talked about the 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 ten commandments. the The first four, the first table is relationship with Mm -hmm. God. Second table is the relationship with the others. This sums it up: love Lord your God. First table, Um, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Second table, right? Yes. And that's why Jesus said this sums up all the law and prophets, mm-hmm. these two things right here. Um, anyways, yeah. So, cool. All yeah. right, you have any final thoughts? No, I thought it was good. I thought yeah. it was fun. I had fun. I'm hungry now, though. I know. <laughs> all right, well, we're glad y'all joined us. We'll see y'all next week for the Bad Doctor of the Week. Not Bad Doctor of the Week. I mean, that, the, that too. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week for the Digging Deeper <laughs> podcast. All right, see y'all.